we generally find that more volume tends to result in superior muscle growth. However, where does the limit lie? Is more volume always better? Or can more volume actually inhibit muscle growth? In this video, we will answer these questions. First, we need to quickly cover what exactly volume is. For hypertrophy training, volume is best quantified using the total number of sets performed per muscle group per week. For example, if we train the back two times per week with two exercises each session and four sets per exercise, then our total weekly volume would be 16 sets. Volume is quantified in this way because it has been well established that we can achieve equal muscle growth using different rep ranges and loads. As long as we are taking each set fairly close to failure in the approximate 6 to 20 rep range, we are essentially providing a similar hypertrophic stimulus. So for this reason, it is best to use the total number of sets per muscle group per week as a method to quantify volume for hypertrophy training. Next, we need to explore how volume influences muscle growth. We generally find that more volume tends to result in greater muscle growth. This has been well demonstrated in many different studies with positive effects shown even with extremely high volumes. For example, this study explored the effects of performing the same resistance training program with either 16, 24 or 32 sets per muscle group per week. And as we can see, there was a clear dose response where more volume resulted in greater muscle growth for all muscles measured, even up to these extremely high volumes. However, it should also be noted that trainees still achieve significant muscle growth even with lower volumes. High volume training simply resulted in greater muscle growth over the 8 week time frame. So basically, hypertrophy can be achieved even with lower volumes, but higher volumes seem to result in a faster rate of muscle growth. For example, a lower volume training routine may result in muscle growth at approximately this rate over time, while a higher volume routine may result in greater muscle growth at approximately this rate. So as we can see, both training styles will result in significant long-term hypertrophy, but higher volumes will likely achieve this faster. So rather than thinking about volume in a short-term sense, it may be best to look at how much volume we can accumulate over an entire training career. This will probably be more predictive of long-term gains, rather than how much volume we perform in a single week or mesocycle of training. So even though more volume may result in a faster rate of muscle growth, we ultimately have a finite amount of volume we can perform each week. We can't just perform more and more volume forever, because we will be limited in some capacity by one of three factors, which we will now discuss. First is joint stress. There is only a certain amount of stress each joint can handle before its recovery capacity is exceeded. If we breach this capacity, we will start to experience joint pain or irritation. It should be noted that there are also other variables which will influence joint stress too, but volume will have a significant impact. So basically, we need to make sure we respect the volume limitations of each joint and not exceed this limit. And if we do feel some joint pain or irritation, then we may need to reduce volume to reduce the total amount of stress placed on that joint. The second limiting factor is systemic fatigue. This is not a well-defined term, but it can be generally described as global fatigue of the entire organism. This is something that is influenced by all forms of stress, including resistance training, stress from other exercise, and mental stress from work or family. Similar to the previous discussion about joint stress, our systemic capacity is finite. We cannot perform an infinite amount of volume, otherwise we will breach this capacity. This may result in unfavorable hormone changes, an increased risk of illness, poor sleep quality, lethargy, and poor training performance. So basically, we need to respect this systemic threshold and reduce volume if we are experiencing some of these issues. It should be noted that this is unlikely to be a limitation for hypertrophy style training, rather it is more of a concern for strength training. And the last and probably most relevant factor which can limit how much volume we can train with is practical constraints. There is only so much time and effort we can dedicate to lifting each week. This means there is a limited amount of time we have to perform volume. And even if we did have unlimited time to train, 
most people probably don't want to spend too much of their day lifting in the gym. So really, we are limited in how much volume we can perform by how much time and effort we can realistically dedicate to resistance training each week. This is probably going to be the main limiting factor for most people. So essentially, our volume will be capped by one of these three factors at some point. If we continue to increase volume, we will eventually have to reduce volume due to our joints becoming irritated, becoming excessively systemically fatigued, or because we don't have the time or willingness to perform more volume in the gym. So now we understand that more volume may result in a faster rate of muscle growth, although there are inherent limitations which prevent us from performing excessively high weekly volumes. However, even if we are still able to perform very high volumes within these constraints, we may still not want to perform as much volume as we can possibly handle. There are two primary reasons why more volume may not be the best idea for some people. Let's now cover what these are. First is volume efficiency. This refers to how much muscle growth we achieve per unit of volume. So basically, we probably achieve the majority of muscle growth with lower volume training, and each additional unit of volume results in less additional muscle growth. So in simple terms, we will likely see diminishing returns with very high volume training routines. To demonstrate this idea, let's look at this study, which explored the effects of low versus moderate versus very high volume training on muscle growth. Quite clearly, we see the same dose response pattern where more volume results in greater muscle growth of all muscles measured. However, let's also use this data to look at volume efficiency. So in this graph, I have basically taken muscle growth and divided it by the number of sets performed. This gives us muscle growth per set or what I like to call volume efficiency. As we can see, there seems to be a general trend where lower volumes have a higher volume efficiency, while higher volumes have a lower efficiency. So while more volume results in greater overall muscle growth, it may not result in linearly more muscle growth. So if we were to graph muscle growth with volume, it may theoretically look something like this. As we can see, more volume does result in greater gains but they see diminishing returns with more and more sets. This doesn't mean it is necessarily a bad idea to perform more volume, but it may not be worth it for some people. For some people, it may be more appropriate to spend significantly less time training in the gym, but still get 80 to 90% of the benefits as training with much higher volumes. However, for others who want to absolutely maximize muscle growth and are willing to dedicate the time and effort to training, then this additional effort for marginal gains may be worth it. And the other factor which may suggest more volume is not the best idea is how volume affects intensity. In this case, intensity refers to intent or our effort level of each set. We know that intensity is an important factor for muscle growth. We want to train close to failure with good technique to maximally stress the target muscle. However, very high volume training can sometimes come at the cost of reducing intensity. This may occur for two reasons. First is due to the mental burden of knowing that you have a long high volume training session ahead. Because we know this, we may subconsciously limit our intensity throughout the training session as a means to conserve energy. So we may not push the last one to two reps that we otherwise would have if our training sessions were lower in volume and shorter in duration. This would make each set slightly less effective, reducing the overall stimulus of the session. This means we may have achieved the same stimulus with less volume if we had focused more on intensity. And the other way that volume can negatively influence intensity is simply due to fatigue. So even if we are ensuring that we put maximal intent into each set from the very beginning of the training session, we will inevitably accumulate fatigue throughout the workout especially if the session is focusing on one particular muscle group. So by the end of a high volume training session, our intensity will likely be much lower compared with the beginning due to mental and physical fatigue. So the effectiveness of each set towards the end of a training session is likely to be lower than the sets at the beginning of the workout. This may be one reason explaining the theoretical diminishing returns principle we discussed earlier. This idea of volume versus intensity was explored in this study 
which compared the effects of training to failure versus leaving multiple reps in reserve. As we can see, the group performing three sets of curls to failure saw greater biceps growth compared with leaving multiple reps in reserve, even with one of the groups performing an additional set of curls. Although the additional volume somewhat compensated for a lack of intensity, training closer to failure was much more hypertrophic per set. So to summarize this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. Essentially, more volume tends to result in greater muscle growth, assuming all other factors are equated. However, we cannot perform an infinite amount of volume, as we will ultimately be limited by one of three factors, joint stress, systemic fatigue, or practical constraints. However, even within these constraints, we may want to cap our volume at some point, as it may not be worth doing more. This is because each additional set of training probably has diminishing returns. In other words, we probably get the majority of potential gains from low to moderate volumes, and adding more volume on top of this will likely have less additive benefit. Furthermore, high volume training sessions may subconsciously result in training with less intensity compared with a lower volume approach due to the anticipation of a long training session and fatigue accumulation throughout the workout. So at some point, it may become a trade-off of volume versus intensity. In my opinion, we should always ensure intensity is on point before considering adding volume to ensure our training sessions are as efficient as possible. Exactly where this volume cutoff point lies is not entirely clear and will likely be different for each lifter. So trainees should use these general principles to make their own informed decisions. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.